pocket pistols are in, and Taurus isn't about to miss the boat on that. I'm Chris with Jerry'sOutdoorSports.com, and Taurus sent me the new 22 Tuck to try out. In an age of so many tactical experts and opinionated firearms instructors, there's a lot of assertions as to what the minimum caliber for personal protection should be. As an anecdote of that, I had a then-girlfriend, now ex, who had come back from her concealed carry course and told me that the instructor had asserted that 40 Smith & Wesson was the minimum caliber for self-defense and that beyond a shadow of a doubt, 45 gap or 45 glock auto pistol was the best self-defense caliber ever devised yeah that statement aged well and here we are now that 45 gap is pretty much dead yet pocket pistols persist taurus has long had a line of minuscule 22s and the 22 tuck is their latest iteration of that if you're familiar with the Beretta Bobcat or Tomcat line, you'll be right at home with the 22 tuck. Though, due to extensive use of polymer in the frame, it comes in quite a bit lighter, and it does use a double action only trigger. So the Tuck has a very angular aesthetic that would be right at home in the hands of an edge runner in Cyberpunk 2077. It has a generous beaver tail to help prevent slide bite and an equally generous trigger guard that allows you to get your finger in there easily. There is a little finger groove here that at first I thought really wouldn't bother me since it's more of a stylistic choice than anything. The control to tip the barrel up is serrated and easy to use. And the magazine button is right where it should be and drops the mag free, but I would like it if it shot out of the gun with a bit more gusto. Following the industry trend, the sights are mercifully a meaningful blocky set that are actually pretty easy to pick up. You've got a blacked out rear and the front post has a little bit of orange fluorescent paint on it. It's actually in the shape of a square rather than a dot. Another stylistic choice that I'm actually kind of fond of. The serrations are angled and deep, so they're way easier to use than previous iterations. That's a massive improvement for the setup. The Tuck actually shot way better than I expected it to. I had high hopes for it because Taurus makes my favorite 22 pistol of all time, the TX-22. But I did want to temper my expectations since pocket pistols are always a trade-off for convenience. And it did start out a little roughish. The first three magazines I ran through it, the second to last round always seemed to hung up, hang up on the feed ramp and, well, I have to admit that was my fault. So it dawned on me that I had not lubricated the tuck at all, and I wasn't even using one of Taurus's recommended ammunitions for it. So a quick field cleaning and switching over to some Eli Club and it was running pretty darn well. Turns out a little due diligence goes a long way. So Taurus recommends six different ammunition types in their user's manual. CCI Standard Velocity, CCI Stingers, Blazer, Eli Club, Winchester Super X, and Remington Thunderbolt. But when I was at the range, I only had Eli Club and Blazer with me. So 
So YouTube and Facebook hate us a lot, and X doesn't like us that much either. Turns out that all of our growth is going to have to be organic. So if you guys would leave a like, comment, and subscribe, that'd be awesome. And if you have any Freedom Seed needs, go ahead and visit us at jerrysoutdoorsports.com and we can hook you up. So after 200 rounds, the tuck had broken in and was running really well with the Eli and the Blazer. But the ammo that it seemed to like the best was actually surprisingly CCI Subsonic Polyco. I was pretty sure that the Subsonic wasn't going to have what it took to run this little guy, but it actually liked it a lot. I also ran Federal Punch through it, which they market as a self-defense 22. And out of 50 rounds, I only had one failure to eject. And it was easily remedied by just running the slide and tipping it over. On the range, the sights are clear and easy to pick up, and getting hits on steel wasn't hard at all. The double action only trigger is a little bit heavy and breaks at about eight and a half pounds and reaches almost all the way to the back of the frame before that sear breaks. So when I was shooting at speed, I noticed that every once in a while I'd drop around off the left side of the plate just because I was pushing on it a bit. The beaver tail does help prevent slide bite but I still ended up getting a little bit of it, probably because I have fatter hands. And also, the little finger groove that I said I didn't hate earlier, well, I hate it. After a while, it created a hot spot that ended up giving me a little bit of a blister on there. But other than those minor concerns and me just continuing to hate finger grooves and nubs in all their forms, well, I really like the way it performed on the range. The pocket pistol is a derided concept by people who like to pretend that they're switched on and ready for anything, but they constantly miss the point of it. It's not going to replace my 9mm EDC. This is going to get shoved into the pockets of my lounge shorts when I have to go to the convenience store for another can of Zin, or when I'm walking the three blocks down to my friend's house for a backyard grill out or even in the highly unlikely event that I ever wear a suit again, this fits the bill perfectly. I mean, let's be honest, women fought like hell to get pockets in any of their clothing. Systems like the tuck are another tool that makes sure we have no excuse not to have some kind of defensive tool with us anywhere we go. <laughs> 